Hi, this is Deborah Clutter. I have another block for you today. This is another 24 inch block and I have made this one in Christmas fabric also. And uh, this block gave me a little problem and it is really a very simple block. I mean, it has squares, rectangles, flying geese, four flying geese, and then these triangles. There's the triangles. They're the problems. They're the ones that gave me the, the problem last night. So I already filmed this whole thing. I filmed putting the block I did last night together. I was getting ready to upload it this morning and I just did not like the way the block had ca came together. And so I thought I could do a little better job. So I went back and I adjusted my pattern a little bit and I'm glad I did. It worked much better today and it, it actually came out perfect. And so I'm much happier. So the, we're going to use uh, two rulers, specialty rulers, in this um, pattern. Sorry, everything fell on the floor. So we're going to use Deb Tucker's wing clipper again. And this is just the original wing, wing clipper. I think there's a like a wing clipper and a wing clipper too. And this is just the original one. They're about $25. And we're going to use this to trim the flying geese. And the flying geese are four and a half by eight and a half, in case you want to make them some other way. And really easy, easy to do. And then the other thing we're going to use is this little tool. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen one of these, but it is a triangle trimmer by Fonz and Porter. I bought this a long time ago because I was making a lot of Lone Star quilts and I was making them with separate diamonds. Each diamond I would cut and so I needed something to trim the diamonds so they would match up better. And I don't know that I actually used it because I actually 3D printed something that I did use. But anyway, I, I remembered I had this tool and I thought it might help me with the triangles. And yeah, it worked much better. So I trimmed the little notches at the edge of the triangles so it would match up when I'm folding it over and sewing it together. And it worked really good. This block came out much better than the block I did last night. I also adjusted the measurements on the triangle a little bit too. But the block I did yesterday, the, the points weren't there were some of the points that weren't very good and I had to trim the whole block because it was mm, out of whack. <laughs> but this one came out perfect and uh, all the corners look nice and I think the block looks really pretty. So I'll go ahead and show you the one I made last night if I don't knock this over. So here is the one I made last night. It's a different color. Actually, I think I like this color better, but um, the points aren't, I don't know, they're not, not great, but they're not bad. They're just not, it, it's just not something I was very proud of. So I will use this block in my quilt anyway, because nobody's going to be able to tell. As soon as I put this sashing on, you're not going to be able to tell. But this one actually came out nice and straight, and all the uh, points came out nice. Because see the triangle in the corner, and then you have to sew this triangle on, and here's what the whole block looks like. And I think uh, the other block, I had debated on whether to make these red or not, and I think I should have, because I think it would have looked better, but I still like it. I just kind of like these colors a little bit better. So if you want to try this block, I mean... Like I said, easy cutting. The flying geese are easy. The triangles aren't really that bad as long as you're careful not to stretch them. And if you have this little tool and you use it, then it, it'll make it a little bit easier. If you don't, then you're just gonna have to sew in the little uh, groove where the triangle overlaps the edge of the, you know, the fabric you're sewing it to. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, I'll show you. So here's the corner. 
and usually the triangle will be sticking out and pointing past the fabric right here. And so you usually have to sew right at the edge. Well, the little trimmer just trims it off so that it's flush over here. And, and then you can match it up and it, it matches up much better. So that's kind of what it does. I hope you like this video and um, let me know. Thanks. Here's the instructions for the block we're going to be working on. And I suggest that you take and write the color of the fabric you're going to use in each one of these so it doesn't get all confusing because obviously your colors are going to probably be different than mine. And so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, the A piece is the middle and this is my middle piece. And then we have the B pieces, which are these big uh, rectangles around the star. And they're going to be green. So here's my B pieces. The star points are going to be this gray. And then here's all the background colors. Now, this one is for the flying geese. And these three squares are all the same size. But one of them is for the flying geese, so we'll set that aside. And then we have these two squares, and we're going to need to cut those in half. So just kind of line them up. And you're going to cut them on the diagonal from corner to corner. Just like that. And then I'm just going to stack them together. And try to get them all even because we need to do something else real quick. You can do this each one separately if you want, but Nobody wants to do anything twice, so just going to carefully line them all up. All right, I think I got them lined up. So I have this little tool that I bought from Fonz and Porter. And it's a, a little corner triangle uh, trimming tool. And we need to trim this so that I have a diagram here. I'll make this diagram smaller, but I actually, uh, I actually uh, printed it full size. But so I have this little diagram, and I need to cut the ends of these. And it'll just make it a lot easier to uh, line it up on our, our thing. And we only need to do one corner. And actually, we only need to do two on that corner. Make sure I get this right. Yes, two on this corner. And then two on this corner. So you'll just kind of have to go by the Diagram if you want to do this. You don't have to do this, by the way. You can um, just leave it in a triangle and get it to go a, a quarter inch off of the 
um, the side, but I tried that. I already made one block and I didn't like it, so I'm going to do it this way. So if you lay these on top of each other, one corner is cut on this side and one corner is cut on this side. So just make sure you do it that way. So those are the D's. And then we're going to cut the F's in half also. I'm not even sure if I've ever used this, but <laughs> I'm using it today. I actually 3D printed me something like that when I was making um, Lone Stars. Okay, so this one's a little bit different and again, I printed the diagram. So we need to clip both corners, but they need to be straight up and down. So meaning we're going to cut them straight on the corners. So here's my uh, triangle, the widest parts on the bottom, the tips at the top, and I have the same tool and I've just turned it over. I'm sure if I had it on the right side, but I want the longest part of this little triangle tool. I need to turn it over so I can cut so that I cut the ends of these triangles straight down. So they're not really cut the same way as the other one. If you have a AccuQuilt die, this is just a six and a half inch um, half square triangle on your die if you have one of those. And it'll cut the little notches and everything. So you can use your AccuQuilt die also. Six and a half inch half square triangle. There we go. So this will make it easier to line these up. They're kind of a pain. I kind of struggled with it when I did the last block. So we're just going to set those aside. And we'll work on our flying geese. So you need your E and your C. And by the way, these are just those magic pins. And I have <laughs> drawn letters on them. Sorry, you can't even see that, but oh, there we go, focus. Yeah, so I just used my marker and drew a letter on them. So we're going to take our little squares and we're going to put them in the corner. And I just offset it about a sixteenth of an inch. And you can pin this if you want. I usually kind of live a little dangerously and I don't pin it, but you want to put a pin in there, keep it from moving around. Just make sure you do it at the corners because you're going to have to draw a line. All right, so I'm just going to put one pin because the ruler doesn't really sit very well on this when you got the pins in. So let me turn it over this side and then we just want to draw a line from one corner to the other and we're going to make four at a time flying geese and where's my pen? I'm just using a regular pen I mean, you're going to cut on this line anyway so it it really, it really doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on each side of this line. All right, I finished sewing. Oh, got a little thread nest uh, on each side of the line, and this is what it looks like on the back, and here is the front. So we're just going to cut this apart on the line we drew. And 
and it's going to make two little beautiful hearts and I'm going to take this to the iron and iron it and I'll be right back. Now that we have our little hearts ironed we just need to add the remaining squares and we're going to add them the same way we did the other one in the remaining corner and then just draw a line. And so the reason for fudging it a little and not quite matching it up to the line is because it'll give you a little bit more room at the bottom of your flying geese so that you can trim it. If you don't care about that, then it's really going to be quite close. Oh, I don't need to cut it, I need to draw a line. Right. Do that one. So I've done it both ways, not fudging it and fudging it. And um, I actually like moving it up a little bit more because I seem to have more room to trim it up. And since these are oversized, you're going to have the most success if you trim them down. Okay, I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine and sew on each side of the line I drew. Alright, I finished sewing on each side of the line I drew. And that's what it looks like. And you can already see that we're going to have a flying geese. As soon as we uh, cut this apart, you really have to try this method for making flying geese if you have not done it. I mean, it is really, really, really simple. All right. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and iron these and then we'll trim them up. All right, they're all uh, ironed and so I'm going to get my ruler and I'm using Deb Tucker's wing clipper to trim my flying geese. I love this ruler and this was the reason I bought it because it works really good. So I just needed to put it on the eight and a half inch uh, V. So I'm matching up the V for the eight and a half to my piecing. And then I'm just going to cut there and then turn the block and there'll be the eight and a half inch mark, just set my line there. And then there's a little cross where the V goes. And there we go, a perfect block. So this is what I was talking about. Um, if you fudge it, you have a little bit more room here at the bottom of your V. If you don't, it's gonna be pretty close to um, where you need to trim it. So it's up to you. You can try it both ways and see which one you like. I'm going to go ahead and trim all these up and I'll be back. Okay, my blocks are all trimmed up and I'm going to start laying out my units. And really, um, we can sew all of these at the same time and then add the triangles, the big triangles, to two of them after we're done. So pretty much goes like that. And let's take a look at this and make sure this is going to lay correctly. There you go. See how nice it lays on there and we don't have to try to figure out where it's supposed to go 
it, it goes exactly where it needs to be. So that'll make it a lot easier. So I'm going to go sew these units. So we're just going to sew this to this and this to this. And then I'll come back and we'll sew the triangles onto two of them. All my uh, points are done or my the little star points. And I pressed everything going in this direction. So I just need two of them. And we're going to add these little triangles. So we clipped two of them. The, those will go on one side. And I'm hoping this is going to work. So let's see. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot easier. So it's not exactly at the um, the angle I need right here, but it should meet up to the bottom of this. So I think that'll work out fine. So I wonder if I could have done it a different way. I guess I could have done it this way. Like a uh, with the straight point. That kind of works. Okay, so I need to sew that to that side and sew the other one. And so you're going to use one of the short sides. You're not going to use the, the wide side. And then you're going to sew the other one to the other side on two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back. I have all the triangles so sewn on to these. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my block and these go in the opposite corners. Kind of like that. Let me see if I can get it all in here. As much as possible. And of course this goes in the center. And then these go on the sides. Wow, I think that looks pretty good. Now, this was way easier to sew and it went together a lot better than the first one I made. And I think a lot of it had to do with, one, I made these triangles a little bit smaller and two, I used this little tool to uh, notch those triangles. And I think that helped a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this middle one together. And then I'll sew these together and then I'll be finished with the block. So I'm sewing this triangle, one of the uh, corner triangles on. And I have pinned it and nested the seams in the middle and then pinned it. And then I'm getting ready to pin the side, but you can see this triangle hanging off of there a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom in. So I'm going to take my little notch tool again. And it's easy when it's laying next to the piecing because then you know which way to notch it. So I know that it needs to be notched this way. So you can just take a pair of scissors and 
uh, line it up on both edges just like that and then just clip that little notch and then it'll lay nice and flat and perfectly where it needs to be just like that hope that helps here is the finished block and my points came out much better today than they did last night when I made this block and I think it, it has to do with using this tool and uh, I am much more happier with it than I was last night. I filmed the whole thing last night and um, I was just going to leave it and then I thought well I'll just make another block. I didn't really want to make another block but uh, this one came out much better and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys like this and you know I'll put a link to all the tools that I have used in the video and you can go check them out if you'd like. Thanks.